So we can get started. Let me share my screen. Okay, so uh, in our last lecture, we were looking at discrete, special, univariate distributions, special, univariate distributions. And specifically, first we started off with the special, discrete distributions. And we discussed a number of them and uh, now we want to look at uh, the last one for the discrete distributions and as i said before we are just looking at a few the ones which are commonly used but uh, when you go to the texts you'll find very very many more so now uh, we look at the one for today before we go to the special continuous distributions so the last one falling under falling under special discrete distributions is known as the poisson distribution poisson distribution Uh, so let's just introduce the Poisson distribution briefly. Bef briefly. So Poisson processes. Poisson processes describe describe sporadic sporadic random phenomena let me check the chart maybe my voice is too low the screen is not visible how many people cannot see my screen one person cannot see my screen are there any others who cannot uh, see my screen. Maybe I just unshare and then I share again. So I'm sharing again. Please confirm whether you can uh, see the screen. Uh, Odiambo Kisinga, please confirm whether you can see the screen. Okay, yeah, somebody is saying they can. What about Odiambo Kissinger himself? So should anybody have a problem with the, seeing the screen, just let me know. Okay, so I was saying that Poisson processes describe sporadic random phenomena. Describe sporadic random phenomena, e.g., e.g., telephone call arrivals. 
telephone call arrivals. When I say spor sporadic, they are events which are uh, uh, occur. Uh, I would use the word unexpectedly or uh, they, they just occur at random. For example, you are busy in your lecture and then you are, your phone rings or uh, you are uh, you are on the road and you witness an accident. An accident happens. That is a sporadic event. So for such events, we usually model them using Poisson distribution. Uh, so what what usually happens with the Poisson distribution? Suppose you are interested in studying the number of accidents that occur at a particular place. So maybe uh, you can uh, we, maybe we can count the number of accidents that occur in one week. In one week, then we may talk of the rate. The rate, or if we are looking at people arriving in a bank. Maybe we can look at the number of people who enter the banking hall between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. Maybe because we have a particular statistical in interest. So arrivals are, they occur sporadically. Uh, and uh, it just depends on whether the event you are interested in is occurring. Let me look at the chart again. There is a comment. OK, Rashid is talking of abrupt. Yes. Yeah, there are events that can happen abruptly. Like. Uh, you attend your lecture and then maybe Something just happens. Something just happens. Your phone drops. That is an abrupt event. OK, so let's define Poisson distribution the definition. A discrete random variable X. A discrete random variable X. Has a Poisson distribution has a Poisson distribution with rate parameter with rate parameter. I'm writing on the board with rate parameter lambda with rate parameter lambda if it's PMF, if its PMF is of the form, if its PMF is of the form F of X, equals E raised to minus lambda. Lambda raised to X over X factorial. X factorial, that is if X takes values Zero, one, two, and so on up to infinity. And of course, it is zero otherwise. It is zero otherwise. So this is how 
we define our Poisson distribution. It has that PD, P, PMF, PMF, because it is a the random variable. X is discrete. Okay, so for mean and variance, for uh, mean and variance, I'm sure right now, looking at that function, it is familiar. It's a bit familiar because it was it was the second example that we considered when we were looking at uh, MGF technique. It is the second example that we considered when we were looking at MGF technique. So uh, I would like to refer you there where we were looking at moment generating function technique. So in that second example, we found that the moment generating function mx of t was equal to e raised to lambda e raised to t minus 1 e raised to t minus one. So in that second example, where we were learning how to use the moment generating function technique, actually the example that I gave was the Poisson distribution. So using moment generating function technique, then when we differentiate this MGF, when we differentiate this MGF and we substitute for uh, M prime, we substitute for M prime X of zero. I'm just reminding you of what we have done. M prime X of zero. Then we found that the mean is just given by lambda and uh, to obtain the variance first we obtained m prime prime x of zero what i mean is when we have equation one equation one we differentiate it we get m prime x of t and we substitute for t with with zero this gives us the mean and then to get m prime prime x of zero first we perform double differentiation of equation one and then we substitute for T with zero, and uh, this gave us lambda squared plus lambda and so the variance the variance we obtained the variance as. lambda squared plus lambda minus minus lambda squared this second lambda squared comes from Equation, uh, what I can call equation two. And then, of course, you know, we are supposed to square the whole quantity m prime x of zero. That's why I have lambda squared here. And so we found that the variance was also equal to lambda. So please just refer to 
the second example, which we considered when we were looking at moment generating function technique. So now let us see how we apply this to a question to answer a question. How we apply this in answering a question. So our example is the number of cars, the number of cars passing passing through a given passing through a given point a given point in one minute interval in one minute interval is 20 in one minute interval is 20 i'll just repeat that the number of cars passing through a given point in one minute interval is 20. Assuming a Poisson distribution, assuming a Poisson distribution, compute, the probability that, compute the probability that at least one car the probability that at least one car passes the point at least one car passes the point during during a six seconds interval assuming a Poisson distribution compute the probability that at least one car passes the point passes the point during a six seconds interval okay so we've been told to assume a Poisson distribution and we can see we have it we have our Poisson distribution the question is uh remember when we were defining it we said that it has the rate parameter lambda it has the rate parameter lambda so we need to find the value of lambda we need to find out the value of lambda then we substitute in the pmf and then after that we can answer the question that has been asked in order for us to determine the value of lambda we go back to the question we are told that in one minute 20 cars pass there and uh, when we answer our question it should be uh, uh, it should have reference to a six seconds interval so in 60 minutes 20 cars pass through that point we want to consider a six seconds interval so we need to know the rate for a six seconds interval uh, so in 60 seconds it's 60 seconds we have 20 vehicles 20 vehicles pass through there 20 vehicles pass through there so what about in six seconds in six seconds, we obviously have only two cars passing through the interval. So these two, so our our red parameter, which is lambda, is two. Two cars for every six seconds. Two cars for every six seconds. Be uh, we are considering six seconds because the question is asking us to compute the probability that at least one car passes the point during a six seconds interval. So now uh, our PMF becomes f of x is equal to e raised to minus 2 
e raised to minus 2, 2 raised to power x over x factorial, x factorial. Of course, the values of x are from 0 up to infinity, from 0 up to infinity. Now we need to understand what probability we are looking for. It is the probability that at least one car. Probability that at least one car. That means x, which is representing the number of cars, should be greater or equal to one. That means at least one car or more. So uh, we can rewrite this as probability that either uh, that the number of cars will be either one or actually yeah let me just write or one or two one or two or three or four and so on and it can go on indefinitely at least one car or more of course we know that an infinite number of cars cannot pass through that point but we just say uh, from the question they are saying at least one car or more and if you look at the range of values of x the range of values of x it starts from 0 1 2 and so on and uh, what we are considering is if we have one car or two cars or three cars and so on passing through that point so obviously we can see that we have not considered the probability that x takes value zero now calculating what we've written here x is one or two or three that will be quite it will take uh, i think forever so it would be easier because we know that the range of probability measure lies between one zero and one then it's easier to consider one minus probability that x will take value zero because you see the pmf uh, uh the values of x for the pmf start from zero one two and so on now we are considering all other values except when x is equal to zero so because probability maximum value of probability is one then to get the probability we want that's just the same as one minus probability of x is zero and so it means that we shall substitute in our pmf with the value x equal to zero so i'm substituting in equation number three i can call this equation number three i'm substituting for x there in equation number three so we shall have e raised to minus 2, e raised to minus 2, 2 raised to 0 over 0 factorial, over 0 factorial. Of course, we know that 0 factorial is equal to 1. 0 factorial is equal to 1. So if we perform 1 minus e raised to minus 2, then we find that that probability will be 0 0.86647. That is the probability that at least one, one or more, will pass through that point. So, okay, I have some question here, which I will send to your class rep for practice on now uh, was distribution remember it's always important 
to determine the rate parameter. Okay, so our main topic was uh, special univariate distributions. Now we have looked at special discrete distributions. So now let us look at special continuous distributions. Special continuous distributions. I'll just write that in short. Special continuous distributions. Yes, there's a question there. Or has it been answered? Let me just check to be sure. Okay, there's a question there. Let me look at my question. Uh, the, 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 the issue of 21 cars passing through there does not arise. You see, uh, the, the way that uh, this question is framed, it means that someone went to a particular uh, to a particular point and stood there and counted the number of cars that were passing there. So please uh, just uh, uh, refer to the question. In one minute, we are told that the number of cars passing through that point was found to be 20. So someone stood there and uh, counted the number of cars that were passing there in one minute and they were 20. And I, I would actually, in real life situation, I would think that that is a, it's time maybe when there is jam or something, everybody's going somewhere, everybody's coming back from somewhere. So let us restrict ourselves to the question. Let's not consider uh, some other ideas which are on the outside or without the question. For example, the issue of 21 cars. Let's just answer the question that has been asked. But of course, many different scenarios can take place. Many different scenarios can take, can take place. Uh, so under special continuous probability, special continuous probability distributions under special continuous probability distributions. The first one we shall look at is the continuous uniform distribution. Continuous uniform distribution. So a definition, a random variable X a random variable X has a continuous, has a continuous uniform distribution, has a continuous uniform distribution if its PDF is, if its PDF is F of X, is equal to one over B minus A one over B minus A where X is less or equal to B greater or equal to A greater or equal to A and uh, where B is greater than A. And of course, F of X is zero otherwise or elsewhere. 
it is zero. Otherwise, or elsewhere. Now, I would like you to show this. Just a small exercise, because now you know we are dealing with uh, continuous distributions. And you know, when we deal with continuous distributions, we simply integrate. So I would like you to show that, show that, show that the mean, the mean is given by B plus A over two, and uh, the variance and the variance is given by b minus a squared over 12. So I know you can easily show that. So you can do that one, but, uh, uh, but now let's look at an example. We see how we shall apply that. We look at an example so that we see how we can apply that. Example. If a random variable x, if a random variable x has a continuous has a continuous uniform distribution, has a continuous uniform distribution on the interval, on the interval, which interval? Minus one, four. I'm writing at the top right corner. On the interval, minus one four determine determine roman one the pdf of x determine the pdf of x roman two roman two we need to de to determine the probability that x lies between 2 and 0. The probability that the value of x lies between 2 and 0. OK, so first of all, let us uh, find the PDF, f of x. As long as we know the interval, then we know we know that it will be given by b minus a, where b is greater than a, it is given by b minus a, where b is greater than a, so this will be equal to one over four minus, minus negative one, so it will be equal to 1 over 5. 1 over 5. For uh, what values of x, we must define the range of values. x will lie between 4 and minus 1. 4 and minus 1. So that is the PDF and it will be zero elsewhere. Zero elsewhere. So that is the PDF. And then now we want to find the probability that X takes value which lie between zero and two. So that probability is given by, this probability 
is given by integral from zero up to two of f of x dx of f of x dx our f of x is one over five dx and if we integrate this we end up with two over five two over five so this is the way we handle situations where we have um, continuous uniform distributions where a random variable has a continuous uniform distribution. Uh, so that was the first case. Let's look at another one. The second one, exponential distribution, exponential distribution. exponential 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 distribution now the exponential distribution is used to model is used to model the time that elapses used to model the time that elapses before the occurrence before the occurrence of some event the occurrence of some event e.g. e.g. the time until e.g. the time until an equipment fails, e.g. the time until an equipment fails. Definition, definition, a random variable x, a random variable x has the exponential distribution has the exponential distribution if it's if it's pdf if it's pdf is f of x is equal to f of x is equal to lambda e minus lambda x uh, where x is less than infinity but greater than zero And also, lambda is non negative, is non negative, and also t is less than and also t is less than lambda. I think for now, anyway, uh, I, I, I can see where that will come in because we shall use the MGF technique. Uh, so, and then f of x is also zero elsewhere. Elsewhere. Now, so for an exponential distribution, the PDF is given by f of x is equal to lambda e raised to minus lambda x. 
with those other conditions. So, of course, we want to get the mean and the variance. Mean and variance. Let me just use another board. Mean and variance. Mean and variance. Now, mm, when we were looking at the MGF technique again, this was our third example when we were learning how to use the moment generating function. So I'm sure this function, this uh, PDF is uh, familiar to you again. It is the third example when we were looking at MGF technique and we found that the moment generating function MX of T was equal to was equal to lambda over lambda minus t we found this when we were looking at the third example under mgf and uh, we saw that the mean was given by 1 over lambda and the variance was given by 1 over lambda squared. So we had seen that. So now just uh, let us look at uh, uh, an example, an example. An example. The number of minutes required. The number of minutes required to serve a customer the number of minutes required to serve a customer has an exponential distribution, has an exponential distribution with mean two, has an exponential distribution with mean two. Compute the probability that compute the probability that the time required that the time required to serve a single customer to serve a single customer will be will be at least four minutes will be at least four minutes so in this question we've been told that uh, the mean is two the mean is two so if we look at what I'm calling equation one, where mu is equal to one over lambda, that will help us to get the rate parameter. The mean is two, so mu, which is the mean, which is equal to two, is equal to one over lambda. So what is lambda? equal to and of course lambda is the rate parameter lambda is equal to a half lambda is equal to a half so our pdf our pdf is therefore f of x we substitute for lambda f of x is equal to where we have lambda we put a half lambda 
e raised to minus lambda x minus 1 over 2 x. So minus 1 over 2, sorry. Minus 1 over 2 x. So this is the PDF for that particular example. We know the rate parameter. Of course, x is greater than 0. x is greater than 0. So now, in this particular question, we are being asked to find the probability that the time required to serve a single customer will be at least four minutes. At least four minutes means four minutes or more. It means four minutes or more. So we are looking for the probability that X takes value greater or equal to four. Greater or equal to four. And now remember we are dealing with a PDF. We are dealing with a PDF, which implies that we shall integrate. So this is equal to integral from four minutes, four minutes up to infinity. Because the time should be at least four minutes. From four minutes up to infinity of f of x, which is a half e raised to minus a half x dx dx and so if we perform this integration we end up with a probability of 0 0.13 Five, three. 0 0.1353. So this is how we would handle a situation where we are considering the exponential distribution. Where we are considering the exponential distribution. So let us look at another common distribution. Another common distribution. Uh, I don't know that this is the third one. It is known as the normal distribution. The normal distribution. Now, uh, this distribution is very, very common because generally, when you look at nature, when you look at nature, for example, let us say we are looking at the, let's say we are studying the lengths of some leaves the lengths of some leaves, let's say from a particular tree, we take some leaves and then we start measuring the lengths of the leaves. We will find that most of the leaves maybe have a length of three centimeters. If we are considering a particular tree and then we may find that a few of the leaves may be have a length of six meters, six centimeters, and maybe a few others have a length of, let's say, two centimeters. So generally, when you look at any set of data, you'll always find that there seems to be a cluster. When you look at data generally, most of the time you'll find that the data clusters around a particular value which we usually call mu the mean and then we have extreme values a few of the values are greater than the mean and a few of the values are less than the mean but most of the time you just find that 
most of the values lie very close or very much around the mean. So you know the values are, are on the horizontal axis. The values are on the horizontal axis. So most of the values will cluster very close to the mean, very close to the mean, most of them. But just a few will be to the extreme left and right. So we can just uh, note down about the normal distribution. We can say that most naturally occurring data, most naturally occurring data follow the normal low for follow sorry for that follow the normal low let me spell low l a w most naturally occurring data follow the normal low the area under the normal curve so we call this 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 curve which is bell shaped the area under the normal curve is one the area under the normal curve is one so if you want to draw a better diagram then we are saying that uh, so our normal curve can be looking like this and then this one is mu that is mu and then uh, on the vertical axis we have our pd our pdf f of x f of x and uh, on the horizontal axis we have the x values we have the x values so the area under the normal curve uh, is one is one so let's just define uh, uh, definition for the normal distribution a random variable x a random variable x has the normal distribution a random variable x has the normal distribution with mean mu with mean mu and variance sigma squared now you know a lot about variance sigma squared a random variable x has the normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared if it's pdf if it's pdf is of the form of f of x is equal to one over square root two pi two pi sigma squared so it is sigma which is squared one over square root two pi sigma squared e raised to minus a half e raised to minus a half x minus mu over sigma squared for uh, x and mu for x and mu being finite being finite x and mu being finite and of course variance 
being a uh, ah sorry x and mu are finite yes uh, they are finite yes x and mu lie between positive and negative infinity and variance was greater than zero because of course variance is uh, square it's a squared term and uh, and then we have zero elsewhere then we have zero elsewhere so oh sorry zero elsewhere so this is the form of the normal distribution f of x is one over square root two pi sigma squared e raised to minus a half into x minus mu over sigma squared so there are a number of things we shall say about the normal distribution we will say quite a bit about it in our future lectures but for now we will just uh, uh, stop uh, we will discuss it more next time we will discuss it more as we go on in our lectures